So today we're going to make uh, feta cheese uh, from um, boiled milk. I have 10 liters of milk which is boiling. It's almost there. It's about 90 degrees now. Um, we're going to wait till it's boiling. The second thing uh, which is the only other ingredient is whey water which I took from um, basically screening kefir yogurt and having the liquid part as you can see in here while the um, other part is basically kefir cheese. Then for later on we will need to have um, a solution of brine so just two simple tablespoons of, uh, of salt and uh, of course adding some uh, boiled water and letting it cool down would really help. Um, I suggest to boil everything and sterilize it because this cheese is going to be in the fridge for about a week or two depending on how much you consume. As you can say, as you can see here, I am making quite a lot. So this is going to be about almost two kilograms of uh, of cheese. Now I also prepared um, sterilized uh, cheesecloth and strainers and a ball, so we can actually two bowls, so we can actually strain the cheese uh, into that and then press it down. So this is basically all the basic ingredients that you need to make uh, feta cheese from. Uh, whey water and uh, and uh, milk. So we're still waiting as you can see I've got a, this cheap uh, thermometer from Walmart and um, I'm waiting for the milk to boil. It's important to let it boil and not go spill over. You have to stir it quite often with um, I use a, a wooden spatula because uh, you don't want to scrape the pot itself. Another important thing is that um, I use uh, the whey water quite extensively and I uh, keep them keep it in the fridge until it's ready and then I uh, either leave it in room temperature for a couple of hours or in warm water. The main reason is because you don't want it to cool down the, the process when you use it. And of course uh, I also let the brine to cool down because you don't want to put the cheese in the brine when it's too hot so I just let it stay for a while. So as you can see we reached the boiling uh, temperature 100 degrees surprisingly this uh, cheap thermometer is really accurate then you are adding a little bit of the whey water into the mixture and not too much I would say about 100 cc 200 cc each time and uh, my system some people do it differently I, I um, stir the, the whey water into the milk and wait a little bit and of course, as you can see, even immediately you got these little um, fluffy things accumulating on the wooden spatula. This is basically already the cheese. <clears throat> I would also make sure that it keep keep the milk warm. So after it's almost uh, <coughs> spilled over, um, I would keep the temperature on simmer. So we repeat this uh, process of adding uh, whey water into the milk, keeping the temperature around 100 degrees. Don't be uh, rushing it because um, it takes time for the enzymes to activate the milk and in the beginning it's kind of uh, nothing happens, nothing and suddenly you got a lot of cheese to, um, to scoop up. So I repeat this until I get a nice uh, amount of fluffiness there then I'll scrape it out and um, do the process again until the water becomes clear until the milk becomes clear kind of looking like the same uh, color of the whey it takes um, there's 10 liters of milk in here so it takes about 2 liters of uh, whey water for that so I would say a liter for every 4-5 liters of milk 1 liter of whey and again, patience is a virtue here. You have to take it easy on that. So as you can see, um, the process is kind of almost done. Uh, the thing that looks like cottage cheese actually is, uh, sorry about that, feta. And I just, um, it's a bit of steam here. I strain it with uh, this strainer I got in a dollar store actually. And you don't have to get anything too fine because the cheese is quite fluffy and I make sure when I put it down that I press it a little bit the quantities are quite amazing 
compared to um, the amount of milk that you put inside and also compared to the price of the cheese. So I fill up uh, a strainer. As you can see, I've got two of them because I prefer to produce quite a lot at one time. And uh, it's important to also let the water drain when you are putting the cheese inside because you want to get rid of all this water. It's not useful. It's quite heavy stuff, as you can tell. And um, gives a nice consistency if you press it down like so. And um, the most important thing is to realize that the process has a, a lifespan. So once you're done, there's no use of using more... Uh, whey water because it's not going to help. I'm going to demonstrate it soon. So I created about almost two kilograms of feta by this simple process of using whey water and milk. And the only other ingredient you need is two tablespoons of salt for each batch and boiled water. So it's very natural. So as you can see, I've got two of the strainers full. And then just to demonstrate, if I add more whey water into the uh, what was milk, I used about two liters for, as I said, for 10 liters of milk, the reaction stops. So this means that you're done. If you want to make sure, you can give it a bit of, of heat just to get rid of uh, all the leftovers. But basically, the process is done. And the moment the water becomes transparent like this, it means that uh, there's no more cheese to make. So the next step will be just to uh, drain the water a little bit by squeezing the cheese and then putting something heavy on top. So you fold the corners of your uh, cloth and then you catch the cloth with your hands, squeeze a little bit and put uh, some heavy um, thing on it. Could be a few uh, jars or, or cans or anything about two kilograms to press it down. So to wrap it up, um, you can see that the cheese is now being pressed. Um, anything will do, just to put something a bit heavy on it. And uh, the cloth is down here, strainer, and the water is going to drip down. And um, as you can see, as I said, I prepared the brine ahead of time. So when it's uh, cooled down, everything is ready to go. I just wanted to show you the rest of the things that you can do and uh, the process of kefir. Making so here, um, this is in the process of fermentation. After 24 hours, you can see the water, the whey water is already here. It's the same whey water we've been using for making the cheese, but the difference is that here it's uh, together with all the rest of the milk ingredients. After 24 to 48 hours, you can just use a strainer and then strain it and get the yogurt, the kefir yogurt, which is drinkable. That is everything, whey water plus the milk ingredients. If you want to separate the two, you can use a strainer, the same strainer and the same cloth as I showed you before. Just put the yogurt in um, after you separate the bacterial culture by um, the first phase of straining and then take the bacterial culture, wash them and then use them again. You can then use uh, the cloth and the same pressing uh, sophisticated system as you see here to uh, separate the liquids and then you get kefir cheese, which is extremely healthy and by the way also keto, no sugars and um, very very good for you, a lot of, of uh, probiotics and you get the whey water. So again, you just used basically milk and the bacterial culture to create yogurt. If you strain it, you get the kefir cheese and the whey water and by the process you've just seen, you can create cheese by uh, putting the whey water in boiled milk, straining it, and then putting, placing it in brine. I do recommend to cut it though, so I, you don't have to, but I cut the cheese into squares about a couple of centimeters by a couple of centimeters, maybe inch by inch, if you like that uh, system. And if you want to see a whole view of how it looks like, the cheese factory. So on the left side you see the kefir, uh, it's um, being uh, fermented. You can see the kefir itself, the kefir cheese, the whey water, and the last process of creating a feta cheese from that. Of course, as I mentioned, everything I sterilize with hot water and make sure it's clean and uh, dandy. So I hope you enjoyed that and you can uh, make the cheese on your own. Bye-bye.